Yo, man, I just want to thank you for coming on, man. I uh, appreciate it. I know you're busy, but I've been there, bro, so I appreciate, I appreciate it, man. I really do. Oh, for sure, brother. You know, we're gonna make it. I got to get to the airport like and that. everything. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, you know appreciate the routine, it. but I'm here, bro. I'm here. Sorry appreciate about the heat. Yeah, you know, how, you know, yeah. you know the rules. Yeah, I know. They still in effect. I know. Weight body fat. <laughs> all that. All that. Yeah. All right, man, I'm going to get started off, man. Um, okay. The first question, man, I wanted to ask you. I wanted to ask you about the expectations of the team this year. You know, everybody's kind of getting better in the East. Uh, two years ago in the bubble, you guys made it to the finals, which was great. Last year, I think injuries and that kind of thing, I'm pretty sure that wasn't the year you guys wanted. So I just wanted to, you know, get your intake on what uh, the expectations is coming up for this season. I mean, we expect to be one of the top in the East this year, um, you know, and, you know, from there, you know, you lock, you lock us in a room and you see who come out, you know what I mean? So, you know, as, as a group, um, collectively, you know, we have expectations of being one of the top four teams in the East, um, barring we stay healthy. Um, and then when you get into the playoffs, you know, you know how it is. It's the kennel, man. You know, you're in a dog kennel, you're in a seven game series and, you know, you lock in the room and you see who the one that come out. So, you know, we like our chances in all those type of situations, um, but we just got to get there first, one game at a time. Appreciate it. Yeah, good. Yeah. Um, hi, I'm Jackie. Uh, I work along with my Jack. partner. Um, I have a few questions as well, but I love that response. It's a very even keeled response. You know, you you kind of you've obviously been through um, been through this before. So talk about your role, your OG role on the team, and um, how you know what your role is keeping that Miami culture alive and and consistent throughout all these years. I think, you know, a lot of people really, you know, don't understand, you know, my role and how hard it is to maintain this role. Um, you know, I'm representing the past. I'm representing the Mark Stricklands and, and the, the, the Alonzo Warrens and, 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 and the Isaac Austins and, and the Grant Long. And then the list goes on to the D-Ways and the Bronze and, you know, all those guys, man, the Brian Grants. I mean, I represent those guys. I hold a standard for those guys. You know what I'm saying? And until I pass that torch. You know what I'm saying? I got to hold it down for the past, the present, and the future. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And that's all coming from a guy who's not getting very much minutes. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So for me to be able to hold that standard, for those guys to respect me, I got to work even harder. And that means off the basketball court, outside of basketball. It's easy to show up to practice, coach blow the whistle, and you give it for all you got for two hours and go home. That's easy. Yeah. Man, that's the least That's the least for me. That's, that's, just, that's just getting started. You know what I'm saying? I'm in the gym 7 o'clock. You know what I'm saying? I done hit the weight room. And I got all my work before I even got to practice at 11 o'clock. You know what I'm saying? So for me to be able to, have, to hold this standard and for these guys to respect me, I got to put in the work and they got to see the body of work because they're not going to see it on the basketball court. I'm not going to play anymore as much as I used to. So I got to put I got to put the body of work in and I got to be able to go and practice. I got to be able to compete. And everything I say to those guys and everything I appreciate those guys, I, I got to be able to do it. You know, I'm not a guy that's going to yell and throw stuff. I'm going to set the standard and I'm going to walk it and I'm going to talk it. Yeah, would you um, would you find yourself leading uh, more by your actions or more by your words with uh, some of the younger guys? It's a little bit of both. You know, it's yeah. a little bit of both. I think one one thing we've done, you know, is we've done a great job of bringing in you know hardworking young fellas that are very receptive, you know, to the things that I have, you know, to give. Um, for me, you know, still having that passion and still having game to give, you know, what I'm saying that that's what gives me value. You know what I mean? You know, still having game to give and still having the passion at 41 years old, three rings. Um, you know, people still ask, ask why. Because I still have the passion. I still have game to give. I watch Bam and I watch these young guys at Duncan, the new guys who, you know, have been around for so long. And I watch these guys' t careers continue to gross, blossom and grow. And, um, you know, those are my moral victories. Those are the victories that I get when I watch those guys grow into the player. When I watch Bam sign for 166 and I watch Duncan sign for 90. And those guys making more money than I ever made. Um, but just to know that, you know, I had a part to do with that process and those guys listened to me and helped build in those guys' career. And now those guys can take care of their families for the rest of their lives. And for me, that's enough. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, how would you describe playing your entire uh, career in Florida? Obviously, you're repping both on your head, uh, on your shirt. What a blessing, man. Something what a special, blessing. Man. It's such Something a blessing, special. man. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's a gift. It's a gift and it's been a curse. You know, I've had to grow up. You know, I've had to grow up. I've had to be responsible. I've had to be accountable. And I think, you know, people laugh and they joke and they don't really understand it. But I think if you apply heat culture, and Mark knows what I'm talking about, if you apply the discipline of heat culture in your actual lifestyle, it works. 
Yep. You know what I mean? You know, so for me, um, a lot of things that I've learned, you know, here in, in this locker room, in this organization, and one thing we say, we ain't for everybody. It's not for everybody. Everybody can't live with that kind of discipline. Everybody can't live with those kind of expectations and that kind of work ethic every day. But if you can't get past that and apply those skills and that mindset in the business world or in any field, it works. You know, so for me, um, just buying into that culture, man, and, and just continue to apply it, you know, not just in basketball, but in business, you know, in life. You know what I'm saying? Just the, the stay ready so you don't got to get ready. Just the simplest things like that, man. And you apply that in, in, in life, and you'll be surprised how far you get, man, because the human condition is not to get up every day and work hard. The human condition is to take the easy way. The human condition is to blame somebody else and not be accountable. That, that is the human condition. Um, so if you can build a habit, so going against that, then you put yourself in a pretty good position to be successful and help people. You've been um, definitely giving us a lot of lessons that you've learned along the way. If you could think of a few more different ones for this next question. Um, okay. But, you know, are there any, like, key pointers that you have or morals that basketball taught you, um, but, but more so, when in your career did you pick those up? So, you know, is it something that, you know, happened to you late where you had a, a great realization? Did, you know, maybe you had an experience early on in your playing career. When, when do you kind of look at, you know, looking back at your career, when were some of those influential, like, times that? The, the, you know, the era of the big three, the era of the big three was very influential for me mm -hmm. um, because that era um, was when I really learned to enjoy other people's success, you know. Um, it was very difficult on that team just because, you knew the big three was going to play. You knew they were going to get their minutes. All of us around those guys, which you called ourselves the little 12, we joked about it. <laughs> we, were kind of, we were kind of, no, listen, we were kind of interchangeable. <laughs> and on different, in different, in different nights, you didn't know what your minutes were going to be or if you were going to get minutes sometimes. And that's hard for a basketball player. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Not knowing where to get minutes, being thrown in there in the second round of the Eastern Conference Finals or whatever it is, not knowing or whatever, you didn't even play the series before. And guess what? The media don't care. The fans don't care. Nobody feel bad for you. There's expectations to get it done. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, understanding how to enjoy other people's success and understanding to focus on the things that you can't control in this league, you'll be way more happy. You'll, you'll be way more uh, fulfilled with your career because the majority of this league and majority of your career is going to be filled with things that you can't control. Mm -hmm. And if you let those things affect you to the point where you can't do your job, and you can't even get to the point where you can't enjoy someone else's success because the coach didn't play you, that, that has nothing to do with you. The coach is going to do what he wants to do or what he feels like he needs to do. And that has nothing to do with you. So you have to learn to enjoy other people's success, man. And I think when we had that little 12, to enjoy success on a whole nother level. Because up until then, everybody that came together on that team was pretty much about them before they came. You know what I'm saying? And before those guys came, it was pretty much just about me and Wade. You know what I'm saying? So everybody had to give up a little piece of their pie, man, and it was, it was tough, you know what I'm saying? Because it's not a selfish thing, um, but it's who you are. It's how you got to where you are. You built that character. You're that alpha male. So you had to kind of understand to pivot off that a little bit and understand the benefits of if you can pivot off that a little bit. Mm, I love that. Um, so I know I'm going to listen hot, close to this answer because I'm still, I still, with you, um, have nine more years in my playing career if I'm gonna go as long as you but what's what's the key to longevity man oh man you know what um every summer every summer you know I take I take it I take time you know I reflect and um you know before my father passed you know me and my father used to sit down and talk about it and um you know there's different ways we kind of wanted to walk away from it and, and the things we plan to do um and certain goals that that we had um but every year there's a new kid that comes in. There's a new Udonis Haslam. Every year there's another Udonis Haslam that walks in that locker room, man. And um, I just remember being that kid, bro. It wasn't that long ago, man. I remember being that kid, man, willing to run through a brick wall for your opportunity. Mm -hmm. I remember being that kid where and Brian Grant reached out his hand and, and extended me an olive branch and said, young fella, let me show you how to do this. I remember that kid, Mark Strickland, when I first met you, you know what I'm saying? I right. remember when I played against you in Europe before I got back. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I remember still, I still remember being that kid. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So when these kids walk in the door, man, I'm not very far removed from where they are and where they're trying to get. I don't give a damn how much success I've gained. 
I'm still that kid and I still know what that feels like. Oh, I love that. Mark, Great you answer. more? My last question, UD, man, I always ask this to all players because I get it all the time. Um, what are three things that you would say to a young player trying to become a professional athlete? And I say professional athlete, not just basketball, because I get, you know, a bunch of parents calling me on what to do. I just wanted to know what are three things you may tell a person who's trying to fulfill that professional role? I mean, for that professional uh, career. Basketball is a game, and I think when I've had the most success out of this game is when I've um, not made it my life. Mm. And when I say that, I say that family, God, there's so many other things that are so much more important than basketball. Um, and when I kind of realized that and kind of took that weight off my shoulder just a little bit, I was able to enjoy the game so much more, man. I was able to play better. You know what I mean? It was just so much weight, man, coming from where I came from and, you know, being an underdog and always having that mentality, carrying that chip on your shoulder, man. And, you know, you kind of forget to enjoy it a little bit. You know, you kind of forget to enjoy it, man, because you pay clothes and you kind of forget to enjoy it. So if I had one thing I would say is just enjoy this process, young fella. All of it, the good, the bad, the ugly, but don't forget to enjoy it because it's going to be a part of your story one day. Second thing I would say about these people, to, to these guys, man, we all one trade, one injury, and one coach away from being a role player, all-star, being out of the league. Just know that. You one injury, you one trade, and you one coach away from being a role player, all-star, and out of this shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So right don't never get too high. Don't never yeah. get too high. Don't ever get too low, young fella. You can be an all-star on one team and get traded. You can be an yeah. all-star on one team and get traded to a team, and the coach, don't he don't view you like that. He don't see you as that player. But now your role has changed. And it can be just that fast. Yeah. So you got to understand how this, how this work out here, man, as far as humbling yourself, man, and, and just understand the business aspect of it, man. And the next thing I would say, man, is don't wait till your 30s to pivot into something besides basketball. You know what I'm saying? And that's not to say spend money or anything, but start educating yourself on other things that you might want to do, man, that you might want to be invested in. I waited till I got hurt. You know what I'm saying? I tore, I tore my third, fourth, and fifth metal torso, which is my Liz Frank, Liz Frank joint. And at that time, um, I had never heard of that injury, didn't know what to do. And that's when I really started studying business. And, you know, fortunately, my career in business has flourished, um, but it shouldn't have had to take an injury for me to get to that point. So, you know, I would tell I would tell these young guys, and I even point out to the young guys now, man, bam, and all these young guys, I tell them, if I have a business call, I tell them, man, just listen. You don't say nothing. Put it on mute and just listen. And just listen to my call. Listen to me talk to them. Listen to how they talk to me. And just start, you know what I'm saying, getting your wheels turning on things like that. Good advice. So those would be the three things, man. Those would be the three things that I would tell those guys. Great answers, man. Those are things that um, we hadn't heard before. Mostly it's about basketball stuff, man. At least you you kind of gave me an answer that was way past basketball, man. So I think that's why you've been playing for the Heat for so long, man. I think you're a person like John Chaney used to say to me, you see past your nose. And I think every person man, has to be able I like to do that. that. Coach Chaney used to tell me that uh, that's why he liked me. And we had so many comedy like Strickland, you got to see past your nose. You got to see past, like past what's going on right now. So, man, I commend you, man. Um, and uh, keep doing your thing, man. Um, I love the city. I appreciate this city embracing me because I'm from Atlanta. I've been here for years, and I'm going to continue to give back to this city and my city, man. Yes, and um, thank you for coming yes, on, man. I appreciate it. Good luck this season. Stay safe. Stay healthy.